In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Menace Forum MS-02 Ultra, and I gotta say, I think this is Menace Forum's most versatile mini-PC. It'll support up to 256 gigabytes of RAM, it's got USB 4 v2 built-in, dual 25 gig NICs, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and it's even got a PCIe X16 5.0 slot for a dedicated GPU. This is one that I've been really excited about, and they are offering a couple different variants with different CPUs, but what I've got here is 24 cores, 24 threads, and as you can see, this thing is still coming in with a very small form factor. And I say it's their most versatile PC because you can turn this into basically anything you want. If you want a full AI workstation, totally possible to do so, a gaming machine, content creation, however you want to set it up, it's possible with the new MS-02 Ultra. And personally, I do love the overall look here. It gives off an industrial look, but it's got a modern feel, and we've got a lot of ventilation on both sides and even the top of this unit, because after all, we can add a lot of expansion to this. Dual slot, low profile, and if you need an extra 8-pin connector, it's here inside of the case for us, so uh, we can definitely add some really powerful graphics to this mini machine also. And you might notice around back here that we've already got a slot that's populated, and that's because Minusform has added dual 25 gigabit Ethernet ports around back. This is a PCIe card that comes pre-installed, at least with the Ultra version. This will enable some super fast connection speeds. And as for the rest of the I.O. on this PC, up front we've got a full-size USB-A 10 gig port two USB 4 V2 ports, so theoretically these can do up to 80 gigs instead of let's say 40 from Thunderbolt 4, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and of course we've got our power button. Moving around back, three full-size USB A 10 gig ports, one 10 gigabit ethernet port, one 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, HDMI 2.1 FRL, another USB 4 port, but this is a 40 gig port, those dual 25 gig ethernet ports that we just talked about, plus our power input. And the power supply is built into this PC. And to get into the unit, it's actually really simple. There's just two screws on the back, and then we can slide the whole cover right off. Inside of here, there's a little ducting system. So you can just take this off with two screws and make sure you put that back in because right under there is our CPU cooler. It's pretty beefy for the size. We also have an eight pin PCIe connector. And uh, down below, there's a PCIe X16 5.0 slot. There's also an X4 slot. And where the NIC is installed up top, it's actually an X16 4.0 slot. So we've got three PCIe slots on this mini PC. And right under here, we've got our RAM. It uses SODIMM RAM, but this little thing can actually take four sticks. So you can do up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. The other two are located on the other side over here plus two M.2 slots, and we've got a nice little fan to keep everything nice and cool on this side. So I'll tell you right off the bat, I will be making a couple videos with this PC because there's a few different configurations that I wanna go with. In this video, I wanna turn it into kind of a gaming machine, but my next one, we're actually gonna turn it into a little AI workstation with the new Intel Arc B50 Pro. It'll fit right in here, doesn't require any extra power. It has 16 gigs of VRAM and it would be great in this little machine for large language models. So keep an eye out on the channel for that video. Actually really excited about that one. But in order to turn this into a gaming machine, I had to go with something that does a little better with gaming. So what I've got here is the RTX 5060. Eight gigs of VRAM, does require one eight pin PCIe connector and obviously it's the gigabyte version but it should slam right down in here. We'll just go ahead and plug in our power over here. And it would be nice if that B50 Pro, you know, outperformed this for gaming, but unfortunately it just doesn't. This should work out really well with this CPU configuration I have here. And uh, as you can see, I mean, it fits right down in here very nicely. The way they've got this set up is awesome. And one thing I'd love to try in the future is a dual GPU setup in here. Low profile up top where that NIC is sitting right now, We'll still use the RTX 4060 here, but we could use something like lossless scaling. If that works out, that would be another video I wouldn't mind making. I've just reinstalled the air duct for the CPU cooler here, and all we need to do is slide the case right back on it. And yeah, that GPU actually sits in here really nicely. This is going to be the top side up, so it will get airflow over those three fans on that RTX 5060. 
And of course, when it comes to the overall specs of the MS02 Ultra, for the CPU, we've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 285 HX. 24 cores, 24 threads, and it's configured in a way where we have 8 performance cores that'll clock up to 5.5 GHz and 16 efficiency cores up to 4.6. This unit has 64 GB of DDR5 SODIMM RAM, and the Ultra version with the 285 AJX does support ECC. Keep that in mind. 1TB M.2 SSD. When it comes to that GPU, remember we installed the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 5060 low profile. We've got 8 gigs of GDDR7 VRAM with this unit. The very first thing I wanted to take a look at here was the BIOS. And we've got the Minus Forum Visual BIOS, super easy to use with a mouse and keyboard. Uh, we'll head to Setup. From our main, you can see we've got that 285 AJX and 64 gigs of DDR5 here. Advanced. Power. And our power limit one is 90 watts. Power limit two is 110 watts. And that's because we've got the dedicated GPU installed here. If we didn't have that GPU installed in that PCIe slot, our power limit one can go up to 100 watts and power limit two can do up to 140. Basically, it limits a little bit because we've got a 300 watt power supply installed in this thing and it needs that extra to power our GPU here. But still, I think we're gonna see some great performance out of this chip. CPU configuration. I just wanted to really check out what was going on here. Oh, we can disable some of these uh, performance cores and efficiency cores if we need to. Onboard devices, hardware monitor. Oh, fan mode. So it's at balanced right now. And we could go from quiet to performance. And in performance, obviously, this thing will get a bit louder. Got our CPU fan speed, two system fans. I'm going to leave it in performance mode because this thing is boosting up to 110 watts. And I mean, we've got a very small form factor unit here. I'm not too worried about the noise with it. I don't think it's going to, you know, go crazy like a turbine engine. It'll definitely get a bit louder than it was in balanced or quiet mode. But other than that, I mean, we've got everything we really need here. Network stack configuration. Yeah, IPv4, PXE support. IPv6, PXE support. And finally here, add-ons, and it does show the Ethernet adapter that we have installed here. I'm just going to save, exit, and we'll get right into some testing with this thing. Before we move over to benchmarks, I did want to show this off real quick. What I've got is Forza Horizon 5 at 4K with no DLSS. We're at ultra settings, given that we've only got 8 gigs of VRAM with this RTX 5060 but it's totally playable at 4K Ultra, and it looks absolutely amazing. This thing is putting down some really good performance, but of course, it's an easier to run game. I mean, it's very well optimized. So with a lot of the newer stuff, I think we'll just have to drop it down to 1440p. But so far, it's looking pretty awesome. I went ahead and ran some benchmarks, and the first one we have here is Geekbench 6. And remember, we're at a 90 watt PL1 and a 110 watt PL2 on that CPU. We could get more out of it without the DGPU, but this is looking great. I mean, single core coming in with a 2,957, multi core 17,992. 24 cores, 24 threads. I mean, this thing's trucking right along. Moving over to Cinebench R24. For single core, we scored a 128 here. And if you take a look down the list, it's beating out that Apple M1 Max, the Ultra, I mean, all the way down. And multi-core is way ahead. We're up to 1,903. This is awesome. And remember, this is a mobile chip, albeit it is the HX variant of that 285. But uh, given what we've got here, CPU performance is really great. Next up, we've got next up, next up. 3D Mart Steel Nomad coming in with a 3,214 and our FPS was 32.15. Remember, we've got that RTX 5060 low profile with 8 gigs of VRAM. Would be nice to have something a bit more powerful, but unfortunately, I mean, this is about the best card that you can get in a low profile dual slot configuration for gaming. And finally, I ran Time Spy. We got a total score of 13,672. Checking out the synthetics here, I mean, this thing is putting down some really good performance, but now I want to move over to some real-world gaming and see exactly what we can do. Remember, I'll have another video with the Intel Arc B50 installed to set this up as kind of more of a workstation, but with this RTX 5060, I definitely wanted to test out some gaming, and the first one we have here is Red Dead Redemption 2. I wanted to show you the settings I'm using. I hate the way you manage the settings here. 
but uh, we've got that slider bar. So we're at ultra, medium, high. It's just a weird mix with that slider bar. No DLSS. And up in the top left-hand corner, I've got Afterburner running, so we can see everything that's going on with this system. CPU and GPU temps are looking better than I thought. I figured that GPU temp would be a lot higher. Uh, this little thing is drawing quite a lot of power, but since we've got that ventilation up top with those triple fans, it seems to keep itself nice and cool. We're seeing an average a little over 70 FPS with no DLSS. I also ran the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider because I test this a lot on iGPUs and I know we're far from an iGPU, but the form factor is coming close to those mini PCs. And by the end of this, at 1440p, very high settings, we had an average of 121 FPS. No DLSS going on here, so a native 1440p. Spider-Man 2 did a pretty decent job, but I did have to add a little bit of DLSS. We're at 1440p, very high settings with DLSS set to quality, not using frame generation, and with all of the games that support it, I mean, this RTX 5060 does work really well with uh, multi-frame gen and DLSS 4. So setting that up to X4 will get us over 100 FPS with this, but I don't think it needs it. We're seeing averages in the high 80s with it. And the final game I wanted to test was Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p Ultra, and with Ultra, it does take FSR to quality, so I just go to DLSS quality, keep it kind of even there. Looking at an average of around 75 FPS, and uh, last game I mentioned DLSS frame generation. This is one of those games that this RTX 5060 works really well with, setting it up to X4. Because now, with those same settings, 1440p Ultra, but we're using DLSS 4 frame gen set to X4, we're over 160 FPS on average with it. And I mean, it feels really good like this on the 5060 for sure. So yeah, I'm actually really impressed with this little setup, and I completely understand that not a lot of people are going to buy this specifically to put an RTX 5060 in, so that's why I mentioned at the beginning that in my next video we will be testing with that Intel Arc Pro B15, and we could definitely turn this into an AI workstation. And in the meantime, I will be doing more testing, CPU temps and things like that, power consumption. So if there's anything else you want to see in my next video, just let me know in the comments below. But I do love this setup. It's super small. I think it looks really good. And with the right parts, it's an amazing performer. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Menace Forum MS-02, I'll leave some links in the description. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button and think about subscribing so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.